Hey everybody, this is Steve Smith with Nimble Pros, and in this video, we're going to just take a quick look at how to analyze some .NET code just from looking at its root folder in a GitHub repository. Specifically, we're going to use the .NET CLI to create a new solution file. We're going to add every project in the repository to it, and then we're going to calculate some metrics. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm already in a repository folder here that has some repos under it. This is uh, just some different GitHub repos under .NET architecture. A lot of good samples there. Let's take a look at uh, eShop on web to get started. So we'll just come over here to eShop on web. We're inside of the eShop on web folder and there's already a solution file in there for eShop on web. So we're going to create a new solution and we're going to just put everything into that solution. So we're going to start with .NET new SLN dash N for the name and I'll just call it everything. All right, and so you can see now there's an everything.sln in there and there's really nothing in it yet. So now we want to add everything to that. So for that to work, we're just going to do a command at the PowerShell script that's going to recurse through all subfolders and find anything that's a csproj file. You can modify this to add other types of project files too if you want. All right, so this command is just .NET SLN add, and that's what you would use to add a single csproj file if you, if you knew the file. But in a large repo that maybe you're not familiar with, you just want to kind of gather some data. Uh, you don't want to go spelunking through every folder to find all the different project files. This can be a great way to just quickly load them all into one solution. This works great inside of documentation repos or samples inside of repos that have a, a different project file for every sample. Uh, and so it's a, a nice way to just pull everything together real quick. Now it will fail if some of those projects have the same name. So if you're in a folder and you know it's got a bunch of samples and every one of them is called sample.csproj, well then that's gonna be unfortunate. It's not gonna actually be able to add them all to the solution. Solutions do require that every project file in them have a unique name, sadly. But this should work uh, except for one problem we're gonna see. And that is that it doesn't know which solution file to use. And that's because there is a solution already in the root of this folder. So we just have to pass in the solution that we want and we need to put that argument in the right spot. So in this case, it's going to happen right before the add command. And now this should work. And you can see it's adding all of these things into our everything.sln. Now you may not know that you can just open a file uh, in Visual Studio by just hitting the solution file in PowerShell and hitting enter. That's opening right now in my other window. And then just to uh, show you why you might want to do this, uh, aside from the fact that now you've got all of these things inside of one solution, you can also start to run some code metrics. So give this a second to load. And then if you have the appropriate version of Visual Studio, you should be able to go up into the analyze folder and then calculate code metrics for the solution. With that in place, it'll quickly scan through all the different projects and all the files, and it will generate these uh, metrics that you can then use to get a sense of the, the size and, and complexity of the application. One of the ones that I use sometimes, I'm just trying to scope out how much effort there would be to perform some maintenance work on a solution in uh, an open source project or something like that, is just the total lines of source code. Uh, and so we've got lines of executable code, and we've got lines of source code, we also have cyclomatic complexity and maintainability index, which are both useful when you're trying to analyze a project for a client to see like just how bad their code might be from a maintainability perspective. And, and I have my own metrics that I run on that as well, but we don't have time for that in this video. So let's take a look at these lines of source code. I want to get a sense of how many lines of source code are there total. And unfortunately in here, there isn't any summation of this. Uh, there might be a way to, you know, split this hierarchy some way or, or filter it somehow to see it. We can do min and max. But the real gem here is that you can export this to Excel. So go ahead and hit the Excel button there. And assuming you have Excel installed, it's gonna bring this into Excel for you. And you're gonna see something like this. Now this is the same data. In fact, it has a little bit of additional data in it that you can use to filter on. And now you can see all the data in one place. If you wanna know how many lines of source code there are, you can just highlight this column and then check Inside the, the footer here, you can see where the sum is now 79,736 lines of code, and that's the total for the application. The other thing that is sometimes useful is if you want to get a sense of just like how many types is that, how many classes uh, are there. Usually that's a, a, almost a equivalent to how many files there are if they're doing one class per file, but not always. You can do the same thing over here, just in the filter for the scope, 
choose the type and say okay and this will now tell you how many of those there are and if you highlight really any of these uh, it'll show you a count and so now we know the count down in the bottom right is 318 different types uh, and so that gives you another sense of just how big this is while we're in here another thing that can be useful if you are trying to deal with cyclomatic complexity I'll just add this as a bonus for you you really only care about that at the method level which in this case is going to be a member so we'll say okay and once you have uh, sorted this down to member then you can filter this by largest to smallest and see where the highest cyclomatic complexity lies ideally you want to keep this under 10 per method and so in this uh, sample right here you can see there's a couple that are just at the edge of, of 10 and even 12 but by and large most of them are, are within that criteria within that threshold all right so that's how you can quickly just load everything from a folder into a single solution file and then perform some analysis on it using calculate code metrics if you found this useful please go ahead and like it share it on social media leave us a comment and of course you can always follow us if you want to get notified next time we post a new video thanks